Did you know that Ororin tugenensis lived around six million years ago, making them one of the earliest humans on our family tree? Until recently, not much was known about our ancestors, but this video will give you a detailed account of one of the earliest hominins, Ororin tugenensis. We will talk about their build and the structure of their bodies, their survival mechanism, a key aspect that made them distinct from others in our family tree. Buckle up as we take you through the fascinating and mind-blowing journey of those who lived on Earth millions of years ago. Are the Ororans the earliest known hominid, an ancestor of our direct lineage? Or could they predate the split between humans and chimpanzees altogether? In the realm of human ancestry, Ororan tugenensis is an intricate enigma. Unearthed in Kenya in 2000, these fragmented fossils, dating back six million years, challenged our understanding of the human family tree as we have come to know it. And the debate centers on their placement. This ambiguity surrounding Ororan tugenensis makes them a captivating mystery in our evolutionary story. But where and when did it all begin? Let's backtrack these six million years ago to East Africa, a cradle of evolution with its vibrant life, a world vastly different from our own. Dense rainforests, once dominant, are slowly receding, giving way to a mosaic of open woodlands and sprawling grasslands. Seasonal rains transform parched earth into temporal havens, teeming with diverse animal species. This dynamic environment sets the stage for the emergence of Ororin tugenensis. Their exact habitat remains a subject of debate, but fossil evidence suggests they likely inhabited the fringes of these newly emerging woodlands. Their climate would have been considerably warmer and wetter compared to today's East Africa. Seasonal variations would have been dramatic, with periods of lush growth contrasted by drier times when resources became scarcer. Ororin tugenensis would have had to adapt to these challenging conditions, potentially employing a combination of foraging and arboreal skills to survive. But the story of Ororin tugenensis isn't just about where they lived, it's about who they were and what secrets they held. What if I told you that there are clues that Ororin tugenensis could walk upright? That's right! Remember those fragmentary fossils we mentioned? Well, even these limited remains hold a surprise. Taking a close look at their leg bones, particularly the femur, scientists have noticed features that hint at something extraordinary. Bipedialism, in simple words, walking up on two legs. Bipedialism might seem like a simple act, but in the animal kingdom, it's a game changer. It allowed them to carry tools, improve their vision, enhance their thermoregulation, and ensure that they could travel long distances. Ultimately, it could unlock the potential for more complex behaviors like manufacturing and using complex tools, building shelters, and manipulation of objects with increased dexterity. Hence, bipedalism is a defining trait and a hallmark characteristic that separated hominins from other primates. Millions of years ago in Africa, Ororin tugenensis might have been walking its first steps on a revolutionary path their leg bones share some similarities with later, well-known hominins like Australopithecus, famous for their upright posture. Could this be an early ancestor experimenting with locomotion that would come to define the human lineage? This is just the beginning of the Ororin tugenensis puzzle, and the pieces are only starting to come together. But that's just the legs. The fossils tell a lot more about their build. For instance, they had relatively small teeth with thick enamel, they also had canines that were larger in size and more pointed compared to that of humans. Then it comes to arms. There are fossils of a curved finger bone, suggesting that Ororin tugenensis might have also adapted to climbing trees. A question that comes to mind here is what did they eat to survive in the ever-shifting landscape? Ororin would have had to adapt their foraging habits. The presence of animals like antelopes hints at the possibility of Ororin being opportunistic meat-eaters as well. They may have scavenged for scraps or even hunted small animals to supplement their diet during lean times. Ororin fossils are found alongside animals like antelopes and pigs, suggesting a diverse ecosystem with a variety of food sources available. 
the warm, wet climate would have been ideal for abundant fruit and vegetables, and those thick teeth would have come in handy when chomping on such a plant-based diet. But here's an interesting twist. As a result of environmental changes, they may have had to look for other sources of food, which hints at the possibility of hunting. However, this possibility also comes along with a fear of being hunted. Considering the environment and the surroundings, some of their potential predators could have been the likes of hyenas, crocodiles, large bovids, and antelopes with sharp horns. Pretty fascinating, isn't it? If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe for more weekly content on our ancient past right here on this channel. There have always been debates about our phylogenetic relationship with living African apes. Although both chimpanzees and gorillas were regarded as close to each other due to their behavioral and morphological similarities, chimpanzees have been found to be more closely related to humans as compared to gorillas. This has been made possible because of the advent of molecular studies. The similarities between living African apes implied that our last common ancestor shared with chimpanzees and the earliest hominids have similar morphological and behavioral features of the living African apes. These assumptions can now be discussed in detail thanks to the discovery of the earliest hominid species. Using immunologic and molecular techniques, it is estimated that the chimpanzee-human divergence happened between 8 to 7 million years ago. In an effort to explore sediments that record this pre-fossil era, a number of different species of the early hominids were discovered. These discoveries have shed a new light on our evolutionary journey, specifically with the intriguing case of Ororin tugenensis. Dating back to 6 million years ago, Ororin throws a bit of a wrench in the works. He has a creature with possible hints of bipedialism, a hallmark of human evolution, appearing earlier than expected. Does Ororin challenge our understanding of the human family tree? That's where all the debate lies. Let's break it down to understand each perspective. Two camps of scientists have emerged out of this debate. People who claim that the discovery of Ororin redefines the human timeline, and others who see Ororin as a separate branch. Let's dig a little deeper. The researchers who claim Ororin is a direct human ancestor include some individuals responsible for discovering Ororin. They point to its age, a staggering six million years ago. This predates the previously established timeline for the human chimp split. Being older than the previously estimated timeframe suggests a possible earlier divergence and a potential position for the direct human lineage. And remember the female we mentioned earlier? Well, that's the second reason for some scientists to argue that the Ororin were, in fact, direct human ancestors. Additionally, their elongated neck and entirely twisted head share similarities with modern humans and suggests bipedalism, a key human trait. But that's one side of the debate. What's the story of the other side? Well, they argue that Ororin might be a separate branch on the family tree altogether. Their main argument is that Ororin may have bipedalism, but it is not necessarily a sign of direct human ancestry. Instead, they endorse that Ororin ought to have independently developed a shape of bipedalism, similar to how dinosaurs convergently developed characteristics that resemble the ones of mammals. Based on this, the Ororins wouldn't be an immediate human ancestor, but rather a captivating cousin on the evolutionary tree, demonstrating that bipedalism might have emerged multiple times in our remote past. However, this debate is far from over. One of the biggest challenges that stand in the way of any definitive answer to the Ororin question is the fragmentary nature of Ororin's remains. With limited skeletal remains, it's difficult to get a complete picture of their anatomy and behavior. Features like their hands and teeth morphology are crucial for pinpointing them as direct ancestors, but are missing from the fossil record as of yet. In addition, the fossils that are currently available don't show clear evidence of some key human traits, like features associated with advanced tool use or brain development. These tendencies are typically used to differentiate our direct ancestors from different early hominids. Ororin tugenensis is a captivating, however enigmatic early human species found in East Africa, modern-day Kenya. On one hand, the emergence of Ororin poses a great question to our understanding of the human family tree. On the other hand, there is a lack of evidence, and the fossils that have so far been found offer only a punctured view of the entire picture. 
Whether the Ororans are a direct human ancestor or a distinct cousin, only time will tell. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more prehistoric content.